Well, hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry, and I'm excited I get to bring you along for another canning session out of my favorite all new ball book of canning and preserving. I love this book. I mean, you can see all the earmarked pieces I've got coming up next. Um, this is the mango habanero wing and dipping sauce. Does that sound fantastic or what? Oh my gosh. And it's super simple ingredients, but it makes a very small batch. So um, it says it makes about five half pint jars. And that's not very much. I mean, a half a pint jar won't uh, go over a batch of wings. So um, I'm going to put them in 12 ounce jars. And I'm, I'm not doubling the recipe, but I'm going one and a half times the recipe, or one, one full recipe plus another half. Uh, just to see if we like it first. And then um, if we do, then I'll go, go for it and make a really big batch. Because I like to keep things on the shelf for a year. Okay, so you need one cup of white vinegar, a quarter cup of hot sauce, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of honey, five habanero peppers, and that's just the, the shell of it. No seeds or membrane in there. Um, let's see, four garlic cloves, I love that, and four cups of chopped, peeled, or fresh or frozen mangoes. Yum. Now I chose frozen today. I'm going to make it really easy on myself. I chose frozen and it has you do a couple of different steps in here. Um, it says process the first six ingredients in a blender and then you're going to add pour mangoes in the mixture until uh, your four quart stock pot is uh, bring to a boil, reduce heat and simmer and then you've got to puree that. So. I'm just going to go ahead and puree everything. It's all going in the same pot. Okay, so we need, a, for my recipe, a cup and a half of white distilled vinegar, 5% acidity. And be sure and check, because you can make a mistake and get vinegar that's lower in acidic value, and that would be horrible. Okay, so a uh, cup and a half of uh, white vinegar. There we go. And then we have, let's see, we, we need a cup of, hot, a quarter cup of hot sauce. So hot sauce, and this is the half cup measurement, and I'm gonna use Frank's, okay? I've got the end of this bottle, which is gonna be perfect. Oopsie. <laughs> go ahead and empty that out. There's a couple extra drops in there. No worries. Uh, next is two tablespoons, and we've got, um, so it's a quarter cup, so I put a half, a half a cup of hot sauce. It's going to make this a little bit hotter, but it's okay. Um, and then we have three tablespoons of sugar to go in there. Now we need to get our, um, our honey. And you want three tablespoons of honey as well. And I've sprayed my spoon. One, two... Fabulous. Oh my gosh. And if you spray whatever, um, I mean most of you know this already, but if you spray just some cooking spray, it keeps it just sheeting right off your spoon. So you get all the honey and not, I'll have it all stuck on there and not be able to get it off. And then we've got the habanero peppers and I'm putting them in there just the way they are. I, uh, I did wear gloves to cut these. It's advisable. You can really burn yourself. And I'm just going to roughly get this garlic cut up. I'm trying to see if it says, it says to simmer, bring to a boil and simmer um, for 10 minutes. You're going to want to simmer it until this garlic is softened. Um, you don't want that sharp bite of raw garlic and crunch. But how delicious is this going to be? And Doubling the uh, hot sauce instead of just one and a half times. I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> but we like spicy and hot. So, And then these are two cup packages of mango. I'm just going to put those. And they are thawed. I thawed them out in the refrigerator. And how easy is that? And there's no salt in this. So, because sometimes some of these hot sauces, 
um, can be very, very salty. So I'm gonna get this on the stove, bring it up to a simmer, simmer this for 10 minutes until I can, uh, all the fruit and the garlic is soft enough to put the immersion blender to it. And I'll be back when we're loading jars. How oh, easy is that? So as you see, guys, I'm already canning. I love this. I, okay, I simmered it on the stove and I am gonna admit to altering the recipe. Sorry. I gave it a taste and I felt like it was gonna be too much on the pepper side and I needed some sweet. I didn't have any more mangoes, but I did have chunked pineapple in the freezer. And so I went ahead and ended up using uh, two cups of pineapple. So I've doubled the recipe theoretically, um, if that makes sense. But please follow the ball canning book recipe. And I actually added a little bit of extra vinegar because I felt like I wanted that taste in the background. And um, so wipe the rims of your jars after you've got them full to a quarter of an inch of headspace. And I am going to use my grabber. It, it works pretty good. It holds that jar in place while I go finger tight, and that's it. In the canner it goes. And look how beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is the color of sunshine, and nobody's going to guess that's hot sauce. So really and truly, um, if you don't want it too hot, do just the same as you would with Frank's hot sauce. Mix butter with it, and it will calm the heat factor down. But I can see this would be a great dipping sauce for shrimp, grilled vegetables, all kinds of uses. I'm uh, it's going around in my head right now. So let me bring you in close. Okay, we've got our hot jar. We've got our hot sauce, and not just in one way, but it, I'm going to taste it here as it, after it cools down before I'm done for you and really give you an accurate flavor profile. So a quarter of an inch, uh, inch of headspace, and look how pretty that is. And it does say to debubble. This is so liquidy, though. I, I, I don't see a need, but oh well, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Debubble it. Okay. Now wipe your rim. And they're hot and grab you a lid and I put my lids in alternating so they don't take a chance of sticking together because sometimes you can get two at a time and, they, and the wand will pick them both up and those of you that can know what I'm talking about okay come on finger tight and in the canner it goes and look how pretty oh it's beautiful all right so I'm gonna get the rest of these done and I'll let you know how many we get. It's gonna be fantastic. I, I think it's gonna be the perfect amount to have this homemade hot sauce. And like I said, if we really, really like it, I'll make another bigger batch. <laughs> okay, okay, my very last jar, and I'm gonna tell you, I scraped this clean with the spatula, but I wanna give you a taste test before I put this last one in the canner. And it's not got quite, it's a little, it's more like an uh, uh, inch of headspace, but that's okay. We'll use this jar first. It'll be just fine. So here's my taste testing spoon. Mm. Totally get the mango um, tart on the back of your tongue. And then comes some heat, like a back heat. It's, I can't say it's sweet, it's tart, it's got that vinegar back taste, and the heat is that little rumble that comes at the back of your tongue that's really, really good with habaneros. Habaneros are kind of known for that. So we'll put the last lid on, get it in the canner, make sure that I've got this rim nice and clean here. And we got seven jars. Seven jars is plenty to have on this shelf of another specialty item. And the reason I call it a specialty item, oh, I gotta go get a ring, is because this is not something you would find on the grocery store shelves. Um, you might be able to find something like this at Whole Foods or uh, Trader Joe's maybe, or something that would be a, a, uh, a seasonal thing, but this is delicious. This would make fantastic Christmas gifts. If you have somebody that likes hot and spicy, put, it, put a basket together and um, I'm gonna, water bath can these the directions say to uh, water bath them for 10 minutes but because of my altitude i have to add another 10 minutes so they'll be in the canner for 20 minutes once it reaches a boil and 
Yes, I'll bring you back when I take them out. So guys, it's all done and I'm just, I'm so thrilled to bring you this recipe because it is fantastic. It's not too hot. It's gonna be just a great complimentary specialty sauce. Like when we have company for a barbecue or something, whip that out and let them go, wow, where did you get that? And home canning is so, so rewarding. I get just as tickled today canning as I did my first canning session. So I hope it inspires you to go ahead and do some canning on your own and um, leave less of a footprint. My jars are paid for. I'm not filling a landfill with tin cans and, the, and I'm, my food doesn't taste like metal. I'm not ingesting possibly um, BPA. Some of those lids had BPA in them. Some, some of the cans had it in there and so I'm not ingesting metal I, I'm keeping it as natural and as as wholesome as I possibly can and do I buy certain things canned yeah I, I do and uh, sometimes you just have to but the more you do the better off you're gonna be so I can't wait to have this on my shelf it is so beautiful and I did I chip I tip my jar darn it but you know what um, water bath canning, it's not as Im as important. And this jar just sealed right before our very eyes. So um, seven of these uh, to put on the shelf. That's fantastic. You guys, I can use this in a bunch of different applications and it's absolutely beautiful. But make sure you label what it is because somebody would look at that and go, oh, that looks nice and sweet and get a big surprise. It's not overly hot, but we don't have wimpy lips here in this house. So if you're a wimpy lipper, then um, maybe this recipe isn't for you. You know, if, if you, I get asked all the time, can I replace this? Can I use this for barbecue sauce? Can I use it for, you can do whatever your little heart desires. So um, I've got some other recipes that I wanna try in the ball book. And if there's one that you know for sure that you'd like to see, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know because it would be my pleasure if it's something that we could use to show you how to do it, give you a taste test flavor profile so you don't have to go, oh, I don't know if we'd like that. You know what I mean? So we're going to get all of these out of the canner and I think that's plenty. So. Uh, myself personally I will continue to double the recipe that's plenty to have on my shelf for probably there's another sealer for you know probably the next six eight months unless I give it away as gifts and I've been known to do that a lot and so um, and then I also sell jams and jellies and sauces and stuff like that and so um, it could be if somebody gets wind of it it could be gone and then if it's gone I'll make some more so I hope it inspires you guys. Ah, tell me what you're canning. Tell me what you want to can. I'm getting so many comments about new canners and people that hadn't done it for 25 years and they pulled their canner out and blew the dust off and said, I'm going to do it. And some of them even got their husbands to buy them a new one, which was fantastic. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's one of the best hobbies you could ever have for you, your family and keep being more self-reliant and less reliant on those grocery stores that are just going up, up, up in price and you're getting less quality and less food for your money. Take advantage of sales when they're on, like on this. If you can take advantage when mangoes go on sale here, they're, they're pretty cheap right now. You can make this up and um, any of your mango salsas, which there's a mango salsa in there that is going to get my attention because I do make a couple of mango salsas and that one looks so pretty in the jar. So I think I'm going to have to can myself some instead of just eating it fresh. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. <laughs> so I'm not out here all day long and uh, uh, let's get to canning. I challenge you.